Elon Musk w was tweeting a bit uh, again about uh, you know lithium's abundance, nickel scarcity, uh, but the, the ability to just use li lithium iron phosphate, you know, because iron's abundant. Welcome back to Rockstock Channel, and thanks for checking in. Before we launch into the interview, we'd like to thank all our Patreon sponsors. And for those of you who are new, share a bit about us. RK Equity is an advisory firm run by Rodney Hooper and me, Howard Klein. We are exclusively focused on raising awareness about companies producing or developing the next generation critical raw materials that are powering Tesla's EV battery energy transition. Please register your email at rkequity.com and follow Rodney and me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please also subscribe to this channel, Rockstock Channel on YouTube, as well as Lithium Ion Rocks on SoundCloud for our podcasts. Please note, Rodney and me are not financial advisors or broker dealers. Nothing you hear in this video is investment advice. Please do your own research and read the disclaimer at the end of this video or on our website. Thanks again for the support and let's get into the video. Again, we're absolutely clear on the semi and the cyber, a very heavy vehicle, you know, range and weight, et cetera, are, are absolutely central to those product, products. So he needs nickel for those. I think those are going to both have good demand. So he's going to need a lot of nickel. And on battery day, he made it quite clear that Tesla, you know, all things being equal and no supply issues, they would go the nickel route. I think on on you know on a lot of their products because they see the potential of what you can do on a cost and performance and range basis and charging etc. But we don't live in that world. We live in a world where downstream customers don't have direct and unlimited and fixed price access to upstream raw materials. So. To the extent that um, he is looking to sell 20 million vehicles in 2030, then definitely uh, LFP is uh, a route to go. The, the one thing, you know, you avoid the nickel manganese cobalt with LFP because you're talking about iron and phosphate. And in theory, you know, iron, uh, high purity iron powder is abundantly available. I'm not going to get into that debate. It isn't ex China, but I'm assuming that one can solve those problems. But um, you still don't avoid the need for battery grade lithium to go into LFP. And that could be either carbonate or hydroxide because both can go in there. So I think he, he's looking at uh, a reality where if you look at the Rivian, the Lordstown, the Lucid, et cetera, those are all high nickel cathodes. So he's now starting to face competition and GM, the, uh, the GM LG uh, JV is uh, going to use NCMA, you know, from next year. So he's got, grand, he's got big ambitions as to how many vehicles he can sell. And for all the talk of class one, nickel sulfate being readily available or, um, you know, concentrate in order to make the nickel powder with a sulfate free process, it isn't as abundant as, as he would like. Does this change your expectations for the demand growth for, uh, you know, LFP based cathodes and therefore carbonate? I'm just wondering with the market, with this market cap so big and these expectations for car sales to be 20 million, if he doesn't have enough nickel, does he have to make that up with standard range, you know, Model 3s using LFP, not only in China, but also in Europe and the United States? So, so that's an interesting one, because despite seeing this, you had, uh, you had Albemarle come out in their earnings call and saying they have 60% hydroxide demand, 40% carbon by 2025. Now, I feel that high nickel cathodes, obviously with a lot of assumptions around the pricing of the raw materials, could have a lot of applications and uses and a rise in demand. But even I was only around 50-50 carbonate hydroxide in 2025. So Albemarle is an outlier and they are the biggest lithium company. They should have very good insights because they deal with a lot of, you know, 60% of their product is battery grade. So they are sticking to their guns, which is an interesting one, but it could well be on the basis of, you know, the, what I presented the other day at the BTIG conference. It's not all about sales, it's about sales because you've got massive battery pack 
full electric vehicles being released in the US, the ones we've spoken about, Lucid, Lordstown, Rivian, Semi, Cybertruck, all of those things. So they may be seeing the, uh, the look through on that, but um, I had quite a high LFP anyway, because I, I see a lot of um, non-EV applications. So my allocation to LFP cathodes is over 30%, was over 30% by 2025. So actually quite high, but um, you know, if, if it's going to go into a broader range of, uh, of EVs, and if you remember Elon in his, uh, the middle section of his analysis had nickel manganese. So it was two thirds, one third, but again, that's still quite high nickel. So does this raise a question? Does one actually look to see what one can tweak out of LFP in the 4680 cell format with uh, some tweaks in the anode? Possibly. Um, is it gamesmanship to try and flush out the nickel people to do a trade because he's threatening to go another route? I mean, I don't know. Your, your, your reading of Elon is good as mine. Yeah, our nickel friends uh, believe that tweet was uh, targeted a bit at Indonesia because uh, uh, he's trying to cut a deal in Indonesia. And actually, it's difficult because Indonesia wants all the downstream. Uh, they don't just want to sell raw nickel, um, but he wants to take, you know, he has he wants to cut out steps. And, and there are ways to just kind of take raw nickel and put it into the cathode, he said. So um it's interesting. It's not. It's not. It's not, partic it's not a slam dunk with laterite ores to do that. Mm -hmm. But you know, th there's talk of it. But there are some costs involved. But I, I, I am wondering in the same way uh, that um, you know, it's the just add salt to the clay speech. Whether or not you're trying to flush out the product supplier that you're looking for, but you know. Um, you know, maybe, um, as I say, he's not alone in needing that nickel. There are other players, but you keep seeing a lot of people saying, well, as a percentage of total demand for nickel, it's very small. But you've got to remember sulfide uh, contribution to uh, nickel supply is dropping and dropping, which is why we feel that high grade nickel sulfides are key assets, strategic assets. Is he playing a game? I, th I think always made logical sense from an energy storage storage perspective to go the LFP route and for the short range cars. But I have a, I have a bit of a thesis on that as well, as I think it's too early in the game to be cannibalizing your higher margin EV sales to be going into a low cost vehicle now or in the next couple of years. To my mind, you know, you know, how low or how cheap could you get that LFP to, you know, you've got big casting machines, et cetera, but you're doing it in tier one jurisdictions. Can you really make a 20 to $25,000 Tesla and make a margin? I don't know. What if he's not making it there? What about it in China and just exporting it to Europe and the United States? Europe's not going to stand by and allow imports to flood in. That's not going to happen. And I I think the US will push back as well. So I know Europe is trying to tread quite a careful line, you know, to avoid unfair protectionism of its local industry. But look what they're doing for cells. Look at what they're doing for cathode. Look what they want to do for raw materials. It's the same for EV production. It's an enormous employer in Europe. So to think that you're going to dump uh, Chinese made EVs into the European market, uh, you watch the tariffs. There is a little bit already now. I, I think you'll see that balloon, especially if Europe is not happy with the carbon footprint of that entire vehicle from wherever it comes from. If it's substantially high, it's one thing to charge a carbon border tax or some kind of a, a, a carbon tax on you know, some of the raw materials. It'll be a whole nother thing if the entire car is made with a very high coal percentage supply of energy you know, offshore. I, I don't see it. Understood. Okay, let's leave it at that. There's a bunch of news in the nickel market that we wanted to add this on. Tin Chan, which is a massive uh, supplier of nickel into the global markets, they have a big footprint in Indonesia, and they have said that they will be converting nickel pig iron into nickel mat, and nickel mat you can use into the 
battery markets. So there's three things that, that I would you know, raise. Have they commercially proven at scale that they can do it? Uh, and at what costs? The second uh, question, which is probably the most important one, is, is that it's a pyrometallurgical process. It's very energy intensive, both whether you, you do that process in Indonesia or in China, it's going to require, uh, you know, a lot of energy and, and those two countries, you know, uh, use a lot of coal and fuel as uh, energy sources. So from a GHG emissions perspective, it's unlikely that either Europe for sure and the US also unlikely would accept that material into, that, into their supply chains as OEMs or consumers. So that material is likely to be destined to China. Third thing that, that comes up of uh, that announcement is now that the nickel price is pulled back, is this now going to threaten lower grade nickel sulfide deposits in Canada and elsewhere that need 10 to $12 a pound to justify after tax rates of returns, the RRs that are needed to see them? Are they, you know, is their potential development now being pushed back because nickel is now drifted back to lower prices? You know, for projects, and again, caveated a client of ours, but projects like Talon that are high grade nickel sulfide strategically located in the US, they will continue to get developed. And last topic, uh, Tesla was in the news uh, with respect to nickel um, and this New Caledonia Goro mine uh, becoming a technical advisor to it. How do you interpret this news? So it's an interesting one because recently we saw, uh, you know, Volo was going to give up on it because they couldn't find a buyer. So this is a, you know, a turn of events, I guess. On the positive side, a lot of Volo's money has been spent developing it. That's sunk now. It is a challenge project from the past. Could this turn it around? You know, again, it's not clear if Tesla has any financial risk and exposure to this project other than the time that they're spending uh, looking to assist the new owners and to be a natural offtake partner for, for the project. It's a French territory, and uh, this mine is a very significant you know, revenue generator. According to the BBC, maybe in the absence of finding a buyer for this, they've given to local employees and provinces of New Caledonia, they've reduced Trafagura, which is a major um, trader uh, and miner. And the article suggests that, I guess if it were, I mean, Tesla's a technical advisor on sustainability related activities, because I don't know how sustainable the process of this was, but I, total speculation here. This is a small country. Uh, if Tesla can kind of inject itself here as an advisor and can figure out and justify that this is can be a sustainable mine they can be secure a a lot of nickel supply from this mine uh, at a reasonable price in terms of of all of the universe of nickel projects it's i think if i stand corrected i think you know the resource is is just under 100 million tons i think it's 95.5 million tons and it's 1.4 percent grade nickel and i think 0.12 cobalt so they actually would get possibly some cobalt out of this mix as well it, it has the potential to produce a decent amount um and certainly would go some way to delivering on tesna's needs so you could you can see the appeal it's just as it's turned out laterite deposits sometimes you know the the early days you know this was one of the earlier you know ones it's was expensive and they had some hiccups but as i say there's a lot of sunken Sunken capex already come and gone here, so you're not coming at it fresh. Watch what Elon does, not what uh, Elon says, and he clearly um, is paranoid about nickel uh, and securing nickel supply. And uh, yeah, this, this so is qualify that. I'd, I'd say he's paranoid about clean nickel. If you mine it in a sustainable, etc. way, I'll give you a long-term contract. He didn't just say if you mine it. Back to the Tin Shan conversation. He's not, Tesla's not, in my opinion, there's no chance of them taking that converted nickel. 
Right. So interesting. So dirty nickel and clean nickel, China and ex-China, the geopolitics of battery materials, including nickel, um, a story we'll continue to watch closely. Thanks a lot for this, Rodney.